Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, if you are new, and we just purchased our new dream home, and we are having a housewarming party tomorrow. Today is Friday, and I'm gonna do all the prep today for the party so that I don't have to stress about food tomorrow. So I hope you enjoy this video where we prep a couple side salads, a couple desserts, a main dish, and we enjoy the afternoon being in the kitchen together so that we don't have to worry about any food prep tomorrow. I did need to do a small Walmart pickup. My grocery shopping, my oven's preheated because we're gonna be making a rhubarb cake and a pound cake. Now, my grocery shopping has completely changed my style of grocery shopping since this whole move. I am not bulk buying and I'm not doing once a month grocery shopping right now because I just, my life is too up in the air. I don't know exactly what I'm doing from day to day. So I don't wanna purchase a bunch of food and then not be able to go through it. So I did need to pick up a few things. We had to get mustard. I am gonna use Yushidi sauce. This stuff is probably my favorite. I usually make my own teriyaki sauce, but I'm giving myself a grace and we're gonna use this today. I needed to get some potatoes, a red onion, a few condiments in order to make our potato salad and our mac salad that we're gonna be making. Now you all know I broke my pepper and I would normally buy this in bulk, but we're not doing that right now, so I just got a little thing of pepper, some macaroni for the macaroni salad. I'm gonna be doing an appetizer with this cowboy candy. I have a recipe for this. It's pickled vinegar jalapenos and it's absolutely fantastic with cream cheese and crackers. We're gonna do a toast at the new house. So I went ahead and got some Martinelli's for people that don't drink champagne because I'll also bring up some champagne, but I already have that. We're gonna do skewers with the teriyaki. I already mentioned the desserts we're gonna be making, a pound cake and a rhubarb cake. And then I'm going to be making a huge fresh salad. We're gonna make the dressing from scratch, but I've got all those greens out there that I wanna have a big, big salad. My mom is gonna be bringing chips and my mother-in-law is gonna be taking care of all the beverages for everybody. There'll be probably about 16 to 18 people there, just depends. So the first thing I wanna get going is I wanna get the two cakes in the oven. The first cake we're gonna start out with today is the pound cake. I made a bunch of strawberry jam yesterday and if you think I do everything, I don't. Yesterday, I took the day off. I made the jam and I had all these plans to do a bunch of computer work and I didn't do any of it. I made the jam, I went upstairs, I watched two episodes of two of my favorite TV shows and then I got in bed for the rest of the day. So I know that we're gonna be very, very busy this weekend. So I just gave myself that day. So just because you see someone online that's busy, it's because you don't wanna watch me sitting and watching my reality TV shows because that would be boring. So in here, I oh, I said all of that because I made the jam and I had some leftover strawberries and that is what inspired me to make this pound cake because I didn't want those fresh local berries to go to waste. So we're gonna make a strawberry sauce to go on top of this pound cake. So I have three cups, excuse me, I have three sticks of butter in here that softened and now I just added three cups of sugar. Pound cake is not a healthy thing, but it is one of my favorite cakes. We're gonna whisk this together until it's nice and light and fluffy. I just turned the stove on to get some water on to boil for our mac salad. We need those pasta noodles to boil. I'm now gonna add five eggs into this sugar mixture. I chose both of these cakes because they are cakes that one, don't need frosting because I personally do not like frosting. And I love pound cake because it doesn't have frosting and the rhubarb cake we're making doesn't have frosting either. But both of them are in a one sheet cake. We're doing like a sheet cake style. So it's just gonna be a lot easier. There's gonna be no layering or anything like that. So it just makes making these cakes a lot less fussy. And I don't really have time for fussy right now. So I just added a teaspoon of salt. And now I'm gonna add in some homemade vanilla. I get a lot of questions when I use that half gallon of rum with vanilla, how many vanilla beans I put in that. For every half gallon, if I make my homemade vanilla, I usually put about 25 beans in that. This quart has probably about 10 vanilla beans in it. Okay, now that's all mixed up, we are gonna add three cups of all-purpose flour and half teaspoon of baking soda. I love pound cake because it is one of the easiest cakes I know to make. 
because you literally just add everything into your mixing bowl, put it in your bun pan because that's what we're going to bake it in today, and then you're done. You make some sort of berry topping or something and homemade whipped cream. We're going to make some homemade whipped cream and that is your pound cake. So I have some baking soda here. It's a little bit clumpy. So I'm just going to put it in my hand and kind of break up those clumps and then we're going to get that in here. And that's all you need to make pound cake. We're going to mix this up. Oh, I forgot one thing. So that's not all you need. I just reread the recipe. We need one cup of milk, which I have that out already. I probably should have added the milk before I added the flour, but that's okay. We're going to scrape the sides one time. This batter is really, really yellow because I used grass-fed butter and I used homegrown eggs. So those yolks are very, very yellow. It's gonna make a beautiful pound cake. I have my bunt pan, I'm gonna spray it and I'm going to make sure we get it nice and degreased. I usually do this in the sink so I don't make a mess, but I'm not doing that today. When you're making pound cake, you do wanna to try to use the best quality ingredients as possible because the ingredients are so, so simple. So if you can use a higher quality butter, a higher quality vanilla, a higher quality egg, you're gonna get a really, really yummy cake. But just do what you can do. Sometimes those simple recipes can be sometimes the ones that you do want to splurge a little bit on the ingredients so that you can really, really taste those flavors. This pound cake is gonna bake for about an hour or so. So we have the first thing in the oven. Now we're gonna make the rhubarb cake. I went out into the garden this morning and harvested this rhubarb. We need to do a big harvest on it. I didn't wanna do that this morning though because it was raining. And so I kind of just needed to get in and out, or out and in, I should say, from the garden. So we're gonna get this washed up. I only need three cups. I probably harvested a little bit more than three cups. I think while I'm at it, we'll go ahead and we'll wash our potatoes for the potato salad. And I'm gonna get that cooking as well. For our potato salad recipe, we need three pounds of potatoes. These are yellow potatoes and I have a five pound bag here. So I'm gonna use probably about that much of the potato. I'll go ahead and cut these big ones in half. And I'm gonna leave the skins on because I like skins on my potatoes. These little ones I'll leave whole. I'm hoping for some leftovers from this dinner so that Josh can, I can have some food throughout the week. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of these potatoes. And then whatever doesn't get eaten at the party, we can eat throughout the week. And that'll just save me some food prep time. We've been going up to the new house after work almost every single day. We didn't do it, we're not gonna go up tonight because tonight is Friday and Josh kind of needs a day off and an evening off and he's gonna be up there all weekend. So we're gonna be home tonight just kind of relaxing together and enjoying the evening, which will be nice because we haven't done that in a week. I'm gonna fill our potatoes up with cold water and then we're gonna get this on the stove cooking. To this, we are gonna add two tablespoons of salt. This potato salad recipe comes from Ina Gartner's The Barefoot Contessa's Cookbook, Foolproof Recipes, and I can link this book down below. You guys know I don't cook a lot from cookbooks, but she is my absolute favorite chef or cook. She was a huge inspiration for me when I was little. She always talked about making homemade broths and going to local farmers and cooking with the best ingredients you can afford because she cooks really simple food and she wants it to taste the best. And the best way to do that, like I was saying with the pound cake, is using the best ingredients and you can cook really simple recipes and they're gonna taste absolutely delicious. 
So anyway, she is my, my one of my biggest inspirations for kind of the why, reason I cook the way I do. And the reason I garden is she had a garden, but those were two different books that inspired me. I can link those down below if you're interested as well. The book, The Dirty Life by Kristen Kimball and Animal Vegetable Miracle by Kristen Kilsover are fantastic books. Great, great inspiration when it comes to cooking local, cooking with the best ingredients and trying to grow as much of your own food or sourcing local food as much as possible. Well, shoot. <laughs> I was just reading my rhubarb cake recipe and I wrote down my rhubarb or my pound cake recipe on here and I realized I was supposed to use baking powder, not baking soda in that pound cake. So we are going to find out if it's going to turn out. Darn it. I normally double check to make sure I'm putting the correct baking powder or baking soda, but I didn't. So darn it. Oh, well, we'll see if it turns out. If it doesn't, I'll make another one. The recipe only calls for three cups of diced rhubarb. And because the cake only takes about 35 minutes to cook, it just says diced. It doesn't say what size diced. I think I'm gonna try to dice these a little bit smaller because rhubarb is a little bit tough and it does take a little bit of time for it to become tender. The only dessert I've ever made with rhubarb is rhubarb pie. So I'm really excited to try this and see how it turns out. This recipe has ex excellent reviews. I will link it down below. When I cook with rhubarb, I get a lot of questions about what does it taste like? It's very tart, so it does need quite a bit of sugar in order to balance that flavor out. It kind of looks like celery because it's in, it grows in a big stalk form and it's kind of fibrous like celery, but it's actually in the buckwheat family. I just added one and a half cups of brown sugar, and now we're gonna add two thirds cup. The recipe calls for vegetable oil. I don't really like to cook with vegetable oil, so I'm gonna put in avocado oil, which is a great substitute because the reason a recipe is calling for vegetable oil is because it wants a neutral flavored oil. And so avocado oil is a great option for that. So we add our oil and our brown sugar. We're gonna mix that together. And the recipe calls for two large eggs. I just went out and grabbed these eggs from under a chicken actually, so they are big eggs. The two that I had already in the kitchen are kind of small. So we're gonna put two of those in there. I've never used brown sugar with rhubarb, so I'm kind of excited to see how that turns out. The next ingredient is one cup of buttermilk, and I actually have buttermilk in my refrigerator because I wanted to make fried chicken. And a few of you guys, or not a few, many of you were shocked. I've never made fried chicken before, but right now is a little too busy in my life to try to do that. So we'll do that in a little bit together, but I grew up in the fat-free era and I grew up on the West Coast. So fried chicken, yeah, I needed to mix that because now it's nice and thick. Fried chicken was not something that we ate. We ate boneless, skinless, and my mom liked to refer to it as tasteless chicken breasts, and they were always baked or grilled. All right, so we have one cup of buttermilk in there. We're mixing up now. Now we are going to add one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Excuse me, we're gonna add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking soda, and I did double check that, that yes, it is supposed to be baking soda. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna kind of break it up in my hand and make sure there's no clumps or anything. Put that in there. We're gonna add our vanilla. I wanna double check my recipe. Brown sugar, vegetable oil, eggs, buttermilk, kosher salt, baking soda, vanilla, all-purpose flour, and then our rhubarb. Yes, we got everything in there, so we're gonna mix that up to combine. This cake is supposed to be baked in a nine by 13 baking dish. So I have that here, just gonna spray it. And now we're gonna put our cake in here.
For the top of the cake, we take a quarter cup of sugar and we just sprinkle that on the cake. And that's gonna give a nice crust and crunch. Before I get that in the oven, I'm gonna put our macaroni water back on to boil. And then we're gonna put our rhubarb cake in our bottom oven at 350 degrees. And the recipe says to bake that for 35 to 40 minutes. So we're gonna start with 30 minutes because my bottom oven is a lot warmer than my top oven. So I wanna make sure that I don't overcook or overbake that. So let me set a timer. I decided before I put all of this mess away, 90% of the ingredients to make a baked oatmeal are already out. Josh really likes that for breakfast. You've seen me make that a bunch of times. I can link a recipe down in the description box. I'm gonna make a blueberry applesauce baked oatmeal so that I don't have to get this stuff all out tomorrow and make one so he has one over the weekend and over this next week. We already ate all the McMuffins and the breakfast burritos and the casserole. The only thing I have left for those breakfast freezer meals are the waffles. And I have to say, we are gonna be doing that again and again and again because that was so convenient to have, but we are already out of them. So now it's time for me to go ahead and make a baked oatmeal. I'll go ahead and show it again. So here is some oatmeal. I don't follow the recipe or anything anymore because I've made it so many times. I put a little bit of brown sugar in there. We're gonna put in this size container probably six eggs. I like to make it a little bit protein heavy so it's not just carbohydrates. So we have two, four, and this will be five and, ah, got a shell in there. A little bit of salt. Good amount of cinnamon. The rest of this applesauce. These are from our apples from last year. And then I'm just gonna top it with some milk until it's full and then I'll just pop this in the oven. You can make this a million different ways. I normally put butter in it. I don't feel like getting the butter out right now so I'm not gonna put that in it. I already have the oven going. I already have all this stuff out kitchen is already kind of messy, so I might as well take the extra four or five minutes to throw this together, and then I don't have to worry about it for the next five, six days or so. This usually lasts for, it's usually six servings in a nine by nine, and so we just stick it in the fridge and he enjoys it for his breakfast. I really wanted to get the large elbow macaroni, but they were out of it at the store, so I just got the regular ones. We're supposed to cook these according to the directions on the box. So we're gonna start with nine minutes. I did salt the pasta water. Another thing I did not grow up eating or ever making is macaroni salad and potato salad. So this is the first time I've ever made macaroni salad. My mom does not like mayonnaise. My mom and dad both don't like mayonnaise. So clearly that's why we never had macaroni salad or potato salad and both those things have a lot of fat in them because of the mayonnaise, so we didn't eat that. So this is the first time, like I said, I'm making macaroni salad, and I looked up a recipe for Hawaiian mac salad because that is my absolute favorite. I love, love, love it. So what we have to do is prep our vegetables. I have about a third of a medium-ish onion. I'm gonna grate on a box. Oh, I just got that in my eye. I'm gonna grate on a box grater. We're supposed to put the onions, carrots, and vinegar on the pasta while it's still hot. So, oh man, shredding it really, really gets it going on your eyes. So I have two carrots. The only vegetables that go into this pasta salad, because it is a Hawaiian style pasta salad, are a quarter cup of shredded onions, and it says optional, I like onions, so I'm gonna do that, and sh two shredded carrots. So I need to go wash these. Gotta work quick, I only have two more minutes. Now we're gonna shred this on the box grater as well. I'm gonna cut these just a little bit so they're not quite so long. Our noodles are done. If you don't have one of these pasta strainers that you stick on the side of your pot, I'm gonna link one for you because they are amazing. They take up so much less space in your dishwasher when you're washing them. And our potatoes are done too, so I need to take care of those as well. The recipe says not to rinse these. They need to be hot. That's why I cook them 
for the shorter amount of time because they are going to continue to cook. The recipe for the potatoes says cook, cook them until they're just tender, strain them, and then we cover with a towel and let those steam like that for 20 minutes. So I did not finish the vegetables, so I need to finish these real quick. We've got our bowl. We're gonna put our hot noodles into this bowl. Those are so hot. We're supposed to add our shredded onion. I think the idea is that this noodles are supposed to just slightly cook and tenderize the pasta. I think that's the idea. Now we add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar to the hot noodles. Oh, that smells so good. This bowl is a little bit small. Now we're gonna put this in the refrigerator until it cools for about 15 minutes. I just checked on the cakes and it does look like our pound cake is rising. So that is a good sign. We have all the cakes done, or desserts I should say. We have our two salads or sides going. So I'm just taking this time real quick while we're in a lull waiting for our noodles to cool and our potatoes to finish cooking to clean up a little bit. The veggies that we're gonna have for the potato salad our red onion, celery, and dill. I went to the farmer's market yesterday and I picked up this beautiful dill from a local farm. I'm putting a little extra veggie than the recipe calls for because we did put five pounds of potatoes in that pot as opposed to just three. I like to cut the celery relatively small. This is nice bright green celery. Red onions can have a little bit of a bite to them. So a trick to that is if you run them under cold water for just a minute or two, you can kind of get that really spicy bite out of them. So that's what I'm gonna do, because not everyone in my family loves raw onions. I love raw onions, but they're more likely to enjoy them if I rinse them off with cold water, and I just kind of get some of that really spicy bite out of them. Last thing we're gonna prep is some of this fresh dill or all of this fresh dill. This is really what makes this potato salad out of this world is this fresh dill. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. This is the smell of summer to me. I should have saved some of the fronds to decorate the top with, oh well. make the dressing for this. I'm one and a halfing the recipe because I used five pounds of potatoes. We're gonna start with mayonnaise and some sour cream. You all know me and I cannot follow a recipe to save my life. The recipe actually calls for buttermilk and not sour cream. But what I like to do is substitute sour cream for buttermilk and then I just add a little bit of milk because I like the taste of buttermilk in baked goods, but I don't really like it in the taste of this. So that is one thing that I do substitute. I'm gonna add two heaping table, well, about three tablespoons of Dijon mustard and the same amount of stone ground mustard and a lot of black pepper. This is where I got using so much, oh, darn it, not to clean up, that's okay. Ina Gardner, Ina Gardner is where I got the using of a lot of black pepper. She seasons her food really, really well. She always uses a good amount of pepper and salt. And she always used fresh cracked pepper because it just tastes so much better. Now we're gonna mix all this together. We might need a little bit more dressing. It just depends on by the time we get the potatoes in here and see if it needs any more moisture. I just tasted the dressing and it tastes really, really good. It needs some more pepper, but I think the salt is perfect. We'll have to taste it again once the potatoes are in it. I wanna check on our cake. I have a skewer here. This is the rhubarb cake. It feels like it's almost done. Let's see, let's start that again. 
Nope, let's give it, it's still kind of wet. Let's give it a few more minutes. While I'm checking, I want to check on our pound cake. Our oatmeal is not done. Oh, that feels almost done. Nope. You know what? That might be done. It's coming out. I'm going to give it a, two more minutes. We're going to go ahead and make the dressing for our pasta salad. I have to find the recipe for it. To finish the pasta salad, this is super, super easy. I need to put it in a bigger bowl because I'm not going to be able to mix it in this little one. We're going to use the rest of our mayonnaise here. We need two and a half cups. I don't know if I even have enough. The recipe says it has to be best food, so that's why I bought this. I don't have any more mayonnaise, so we're just going to go with it. I can add a little sour cream if we need to. So we're going to add some salt. And it just says salt and pepper to taste. A quarter cup of milk. And two teaspoons of sugar. And that's it. So we're going to mix this together. I feel like the theme of today is simple ingredients because this is really simple to make. So let's give it a try. Mmm. Wow. The perfect balance of like tang and sweet and creamy and delicious. This is probably one of the best macaroni salads I've ever had. The moisture level looks really, really good right now, but because this is gonna sit in the fridge overnight, it might need a little bit more. So maybe tomorrow, if I have time, I can run to the store and I can pick up some more mayonnaise before we go to the party. But I'm gonna put this back in this littler bowl. I'll wipe the sides off and we can serve it out of this. I just didn't think I'd be able to stir it in this bowl. This is so good. So simple, so delicious. I definitely think the onion is a good call, just making sure you shred it so you're not biting into an onion. You get the nice yummy flavor of onion, but not the crunch or the, the bite of an onion. I'm gonna wipe the sides off so it's nice presentation. And we have our first beautiful salad done and ready to go. The pound cake I think is done. When I put my skewer in there, it's coming out clean. I do think I would have maybe gotten a little bit more of a rise if I used the correct leavening agent, but I think overall that looks pretty good. So we're gonna let this cool for 10 minutes before we try to turn it out. The baked oatmeal is not near done, so we're gonna put that back in there. And then I think the rhubarb cake is probably done. Oh, wow, wow. Look at, ooh, that's hot. Look at that. I hope I didn't over bake this rhubarb cake, but it kept not coming out clean. One thing I worry about is these sides are a little bit dark, but I think that's okay. I think it's gonna be absolutely delicious. It did use brown sugar, and so it is gonna be a little bit darker because of that. So we're gonna let that cool completely, and then we'll cover it. We're gonna let this cake cool for 10 minutes. I would be lying if I said I wasn't really nervous about this cake being able to come out of this pan. I think it's a combination of a few things. Uh, I didn't flour it, which I normally don't do that, and I used the wrong leavening agent. So it's been 10 minutes. I have a plastic fork. I find this to be the easiest thing to go around the edges and just break that seal where it is sticking to the side a little bit. And I just kind of run it along the outside edge here. I have not attempted to take this out of this pan yet, so we're gonna do that right now. I did the same thing on the inside. So let's see if we can do this. That is not coming out, okay. So next thing I'm gonna do, take my fork and I'm gonna actually tuck it up underneath. 
the edges. I did this last time when I made a pound cake and it did release. So let's all say a little prayer. And hopefully, I'm really digging this fork up underneath this cake. It's really hot still. <gasps> Woohoo! Okay. The flavor on this cake is fantastic. It might not look the prettiest thing. Julia Child said, never apologize for anything that happens in the kitchen. And we don't need to be embarrassed if it's not perfect. It's all about just trying and doing your best and seeing if it works. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. What's important is the flavor. And the flavor on this is absolutely fantastic. I could look at this as a fail and be embarrassed about this. I'm not embarrassed about this at all. I think it's gonna taste fantastic tomorrow, even if it is a little bit silly looking. Oh, see, we just lost a piece. Oh, we're losing pieces. That's okay. More for me to snack on later. And people are really gonna enjoy it, I think. You tried, you learn something every time you bake something, you win some, you lose some. Our potatoes are done steaming and they are perfectly cooked. So now we're gonna chop these up. I like my potatoes for my potato salad to be bite size. So I'm gonna cut them into about, I don't know, half an inch cube. And it's okay if some of them are a little bit bigger, some of them are a little bit smaller. If you don't like potato skin in your potato salad, you could either peel them now or you could have peeled them before you cooked them. You can use all different kind of potatoes when you make potato salad. I like yellow potatoes because they're a little bit creamier. But if you want something that's a little bit starchier, a red potato kind of holds its shape a little bit better. I don't think I'm going to be able to mix all these potatoes in this bowl with the dressing. So I'm going to add these potatoes back to our pot because it is bigger. I'm not going to put all the dressing on to start. We'll just see how much we end up needing. I think we'll need it all, but we can always add more. I'm trying to fold this so I don't mash these potatoes. I want them to keep their nice texture. Yeah, we're gonna need all this dressing. These potatoes are still warm, which is great because they will absorb a little bit more of the dressing and flavor because of that. I wiped the edge around this bowl so it'll look nice and neat. And we can serve our potato salad in this bowl. Now that we have the potatoes in here, we need to give this a taste test. The dressing tasted good on its own, but it's gonna taste different with the potatoes, obviously. I was just about to blow on it, but this is not hot. Mm. If you are not a potato fan, or a potato salad fan, this was the first potato salad recipe I ever made, and it will change your world. The fresh dill is honestly the key in that stone ground mustard. Now this is gonna change flavors just a little bit as it cools because this is a little bit warmer than room temperature because those potatoes were warm. I'm gonna cover this, we're gonna put it in the fridge. Before we serve it tomorrow, we will give it a taste test because I'm probably gonna pick up some more mayonnaise. I could add a little bit more mayonnaise or sour cream or if it just needs a little bit of moisture, I could just add a little bit more milk. But our second salad is done. I'm covering this just with a little bit of saran wrap. This will make it easier to transport too. I don't have any of those really fancy bowls or anything that have covers on them, so this works just great. I'm gonna prep the chicken thighs to make the kebabs. So I have my chicken thighs here. I want to cut off any of the big fatty pieces because we're not really a big fan of those. So I'm just gonna take my boning knife and go through and remove those pieces. And then because I'm gonna put this on a kebab and I'm gonna weave it throughout the kebab, I'm gonna cut the chicken thigh in half lengthwise. And then we're gonna put it in our bag. I did fold these bags in on themselves, so when we go to close them, we won't have chickeny bits on the outside of those Ziploc bags. You all know that Ziploc bags are not my favorite thing to use. If I was gonna do this here and not transport them, 
I could just marinate them in a 9 by 13 and I wouldn't have to use a Ziploc bag, but I'm transporting these up to the new house. And so they need to be in something that's going to contain them and a Ziploc bag is my best option. So I've never done this before. I've eaten these before, but I've never made them before. So I called my mom last night and I asked her, should I skewer this chicken, put it on the skewers and marinate the meat on the skewer? And she said no, because that sauce has so much sugar in it. If we were to put these on the kebabs or the skewers and then go to cook them, what would happen is that skewer would just be filled with sugar and the skewer would burn. That's why I'm marinating this meat separately from the skewer and then we'll skewer them tomorrow. But I want them marinating overnight. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing here. That's the plan. So I'm gonna get these all in here. I may have thawed too much chicken. I don't know. I, I'm gonna go ahead and marinate it and cook it all even if I think it's too much for the party. That way Josh and I have some pre-cooked chicken and because our lettuce greens are coming in full force right now and we want to eat a lot of salads and one way to have a nice salad for dinner and have it be a complete meal is if you put a little bit of chicken on it and teriyaki chicken on salad is honestly my favorite so I'm really excited that we're gonna have hopefully some extras of this we have our chicken all prepped but what I want to do with these skewers so they don't burn in the barbecue process is I'm gonna soak them overnight in water so I have a nine by 13 here just filled with water and I'm gonna set this plate on them so that they stay underneath the water. That way they're less likely to burn when we cook with them. And now for our chicken, we've got our Yoshides. This sauce is what I ate all the time as a kid. I loved this stuff. I personally don't buy it because it is full of sugar, but for something like this, I think it's gonna be fantastic. It's a, I always thought teriyaki sauce was super, super sweet. And some teriyaki sauces are not sweet, and this one is. This sauce was made by a dentist. He's now retired because from dentistry because he makes sauces now. And he was from Portland, Oregon. So I'm going to pour half this bottle into each one of these bags. So, so, so good. That is the taste of my childhood. White rice was one of my favorite things growing up. And I would make white rice and I would put corn in it and I would cover it in this. Probably not the healthiest lunch, but it was one of my favorite lunches ever. I'm gonna turn these bags this way. That's why I like to do it that way because I don't get chicken on the outside of the bag. I'm gonna kind of get a little bit of that air out. Then we're gonna put these in here and then I'm gonna stick these and then I'll stick this in the fridge and having it in this nine by 13 in this Ziploc bag, I'm gonna trust traveling with it in my car a little bit better just in case one of these bags opens for some reason or something. It will be in this nine by 13 and I won't have to worry about it getting in my car, but I will also probably pack a bunch of this stuff up in boxes if I can find boxes. So just like that, this is going in the fridge to marinate overnight. What I did with this pound cake to kind of hide our mistake is I'm putting it the opposite direction you normally would. Normally when you have a bunk cake, you would have the bottom on the top instead of the top on the bottom. But I think this looks a little bit nicer for presentation purposes. We've got our skewers soaking overnight. I may have forgotten about this oatmeal. It's not overbaked. It's actually perfectly baked. When I remembered about it, I took it out of the oven. Our cake is done and it's nice and cool now. My dogs have been upstairs and I just let them out to hang out with me for a little bit. <laughs> and they are now searching for any little bits I may have dropped on the floor. And the way I cook, there probably are little bits that are dropped on the floor. We got our two salads, our potato and mac salad done. We have our chicken marinating. And I also have set out a couple things. I need to grab two bottles of champagne to remember to bring, but I want those in the fridge so they're cold. We have our cowboy candy, our crackers, our forks and plates. I normally don't use disposable paper plates or plastic forks. For this party, we're gonna do that. If it was here 
and we weren't in the middle of construction, I would use regular. Before we got started today, I did unload the dishwasher. Anytime I do one of these big cooking days, I like to make sure the dishwasher is unloaded so I can load it as I go. I do have some dishes I need to wash by hand, so I'm gonna do those now. Tomorrow is Saturday to orbit. I said down, please, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Their nails tick on the floor and it's distracting to me, so that's why I'm just having him sit on the floor. No, thank you. That's why I have them sit on the floor while I'm talking to you. The reason I wanted to do the bulk of this cooking prep today on Friday, not Saturday, the day of the party, is because tomorrow Josh has off and he's gonna be working up at the house and I wanna be able to help support him and be up there with him while he's working on the house. I didn't wanna be doing all this food prep when I could be helping him. Tomorrow though, we are gonna do a little bit of food prep. We're gonna go harvest all the salad greens. It was raining pretty hard today, so I didn't really feel like being out there and doing that right now. We're gonna make the dressing. We're gonna make some candied pecans or walnuts or something, I think, and we're gonna get that ready to go. I do need to pick up a few things at the store tomorrow, and then we have to set up for the party, but we're also gonna be working on the house tomorrow. So if you wanna see how this whole party comes together and you're new, please consider subscribing. That will be the next video that comes out. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you are new and you wanna watch a few of my other videos, I will put some right here. You can go enjoy those between now and my next upload. I wanna say a huge thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate every single one of you and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friends.